Well, good afternoon, good evening, and good day to everyone here on this call. Welcome to our webinar with our partners and friends at the Scaled Agile Framework. We appreciate you being here. My name is Bill Hawking. I'm your moderator slash facilitator. And for time purposes, I'm going to introduce our two speakers, and then we're going to kick this off. So Audrey first, Audrey Boyston, is an enterprise transformation coach, international speaker, an SPCT, no small feat, and a lead agile change leader. She's a senior consultant with the Scaled Agile Framework organization, been there for one and a half years or so. She's also the president of Thoughtful Agile and has been an agile coach at Capital One, another organization for many, many years. So thank you, Audrey, for being with us today. We're excited to have you share your perspectives. Raz Sankavaram is the co-founder and CEO of Radis Software, and she's been at the helm for 14 years. Raj is also a senior program manager for large government programs. And for example, she ran the corporate work plan program for the FAA for years. Uh, Raj is also uh, Radis's product manager for Metronome. So thank you, Raj, for being there. So for why are we here today? Well, it's basically uh, for us to share some information and have you learn, hopefully, about uh, virtual working today in a virtual environment in the Scaled Agile Framework perspective. And so we hope that you do learn about some best practices. We're gonna share those with you on how organizations are flourishing in today's virtual environment, courtesy of our friends at COVID Incorporated. And we also hope that you learn about new technologies that have been developed to accelerate collaboration and business mission impact in our virtual environment today. One such new technology is a 100% safe ALM framework called Metronome Orchestrated Agile. And we're gonna share a few of the core functions that Metronome leverages to accelerate collaboration in today's virtual organizations. And we really do hope that you get excited to learn more about that. So two last points before we move on. First of all, please hold your questions until the end. And then secondly, we are gonna be recording this to ensure that it is posted. Okay, Raj, next slide. Okay, so a little bit about Radis software. Um, in a sense, we have several lines of business here at Radis. Um, you can see them on the screen. Uh, Radis was started in 2004 as a, a management consulting business, and we provided management and IT consulting to many firms, private as well as public sector. Raj and Sudhi Sankavaram, both co-owners of Radis, uh, started the business back then as a woman-owned small business. And you can see here on the screen the various competencies that we have. That range from strategic planning through enterprise architecture. And then most recently, we we formed a sub-focus or a sub-vertical uh, around the Scaled Agile framework simply because it was accelerating so rapidly in terms of how to build software and how to build systems in new and transformational ways. So um, we decided to create this line of business to further differentiate ourselves from the pack. Raj, next slide. So as you can see here, we call this the wheel. These are our lines of business here at Radis. And because of the red circle around the scaled agile area, we decided to form this line of, boat, uh, line of business to focus and leverage this rapidly growing train, if you will, that is SAI. So as many of you may be aware of in the federal government business, there are literally hundreds of transformational partners that do coaching, consulting, and transformation, but very few of them have actually built tools and software that can help enable those transformational services. Well, we engineered Metronome to help organizations accelerate their journey to realizing the benefits of the Scaled Agile Framework platform. Raj is gonna be sharing more about Metronome later in the webinar. But first, you're gonna hear directly from Safe, from Audrey, as she shares some current best practices of how some organizations are flourishing using the Scale Agile framework in our now virtual world. So next slide, Raj, and let's go ahead and welcome Audrey Boyston. Thank you, Audrey, take it. Great, all right. We can, can see your screen. Me? You can see my screen, awesome. Thank you for that, Bill. So today, um, I would like to focus on virtual PI planning. There's all types of events that we have in SAFE. PI planning is really where the magic all comes together. 
So I want to share with you a little bit about our first virtual PI planning and some of the learnings that we have, as well as some of those, those great aha moments that we had and some good practices that are ho I will hope you might be able to bring into your arts as well. Uh, so first and foremost, it's really important that no matter what we're doing, whether it's in a face-to-face, -face, if it's in a virtual setting, that we're talking about having a lean agile mindset. And we want to make sure that we don't lose sight of that just because the rest of our art, the rest of our teams aren't directly like right in front of you. So just, I want to touch a, a little bit on the house of lean. You know, the biggest things are respect for people and culture. So when you think about all of the virtual events that you're going to be having, what are you doing to make sure that if you have people around the globe and all over that you're respecting their time and you're not making people stay up until, you know, two in the morning or three in the morning, as an example for a PI planning that you're like, oh, I need your, to have your firm commitment on this. So respect for people and culture really comes into play here. Uh, relentless improvement is the other one not only describing our intent to improve the experience of remote planning over time but we also want to identify some improvement opportunities throughout the planning itself and of course we don't want to forget about the agile manifesto which got us started here in the first place so we're reminded to do our best to value all of the individuals and interactions over the processes and tools that we have so in a distributed pi planning as as well as this completely virtual in recent months this also makes sure that we integrate all of the tooling that we have is seamless and pain-free and that we're there to help people and then to learn from that. So I wanna to focus today, first and foremost, on the facilitation part of it. As you may or may not know, facilitation is really key to making sure that you come to a place where you have those outcomes you need at the end of the day. I often coach my RTEs to share the facilitation. This isn't a one person, you know, leading the whole art, leading those whole ceremonies. It's sharing the space. It's a collaborative effort. Do a dry run of the PI planning event with the facilitators and the scrum masters. Make sure that everybody understands the process. Maybe there's a facilitator cheat sheet that will clear the running order and all the responsibilities that you need to. Maybe one person's monitoring questions that come in. Maybe one, sh one person is making sure that all of the collaborations that people need from different teams, that they're able to do that. Whether it's breakout rooms they're in or what have you, that people have a clear path and they understand how to have those collaborations. It goes without saying that remote PI planning events take a lot of preparation and require this collaborative effort to execute on it successfully. So this is where this team of facilitators comes in. You're creating the space. So when people are first, yes, it's a virtual space, but what we're talking about here would go beyond even the physical space if we were face-to-face. -face. How are you creating that space for collaboration? How are you creating that safe space where people are open and able to have those needed conversations that they have? How are you creating the space where people feel comfortable pushing back if something doesn't feel like it's the right thing to move forward with? You wanna foster curiosity in all of these collaborations that you're enabling. What are other people working on? Especially when we're all in this virtual setting, it's making sure that all of the teams on the art are connected to one another. They all understand where they fit into the big picture. And it's not it's just a number of silo teams working independently in these different breakout sessions. Asking people questions. Visiting the teams, one of the my favorite parts of our virtual, our first fully virtual PI planning session was when we would have people visit our teams. They would come into our team rooms and say, hey, how's it going? I just wanted to check in. Do you need anything from us? You wanna make sure that up front, you're as a facilitator and a group of facilitators, you are having these conversations with people so that they know that they can do these things rather than just staying with their teams. And I always say, first and foremost, every SPC class that I'm teaching for change agents and, and coaching change agents around the world, being patient and extending grace, because it's really important, especially in this interim environment that we're in, that we keep that in mind. 
So when you think of virtual working agreements, a couple of different things here. It's very helpful for people to have cameras on. If they don't have the cameras on, then you're only getting you know, one piece of what they're trying to communicate to you. And you wanna make sure that especially during this event, event that you really understand that people are not just saying, okay, great, let's just move forward with this. They really truly have confidence in what they're committing to. These working agreements really set, create this set of norms that determine how the teams want to work together to be the most productive. But then the second piece to that is that they allow the facilitators to hold attendees to these pre-agreed guidelines and the teams to hold themselves and each other accountable to them. On, on the right are the working agreements that we use during our events. So we presented them at the start of day one and we revisited them and evolved them during the event, which is really, really crucial. We do the same thing with our training sessions, whether they're in person or if they're in this virtual setting. Are these still working for us? Do we need to add anything else? We decided to have the cameras on, like I said. We tried to be careful to have only one conversation at a time and not hog air time. We wanted to make sure that we alerted the team when we joined their their channels. So as I mentioned, like, hey, we went to different groups to see how you doing? Is there anything that we can help with? Would you like to partner up on something? But you also want to introduce yourself, not just interrupt the conversation, but you want to introduce yourself so people actually understand and they see that you're there. Um, using chat for questions, when we had large sessions, when we were all like the equivalent of our big room, if a lot of questions came up, it was really helpful to have those in chat so that we could look through them and we can all discuss them collectively. And if 10 people had the same question, great, you could ask it once. The key part that we noticed too is don't look, work alone without your teams. It's really important that during this event, you don't have people that just go off and, well, I'm gonna plan, I need to do this on my own. Let me just go ahead and do this. You wanna make sure that you don't have that happening. And of course, my favorite, one of my favorites is assuming positive intent for all of this. So the next thing is really about creating these communication pathways. We had different channels that we had on Slack. We had one for the facilitators to stay connected. The second one where we had support issues. And the third main communication channel for all our wide announcements. We also had each channels, a channel for each one of the teams. So that if somebody had a request that they needed to work with one person from a team, this went to the whole team. So it wasn't having these silo side conversations, but the team was aware about all the different collaborations that were happening. We had a channel for continuous feedback. This is where, think of those learning loops that we ha you have in your day-to-day -day work. We tried to do that here too. How are things going and how do we keep learning from this? Because learning is the key part to making this better and making this actually work in the first place. Something that we did feel we were missing throughout this was to have discussions around you know, specific features. We had team breakouts and such, but, but how do we make sure that it's, we all need to collectively talk about a specific feature, maybe there's potentially three or four teams working on it. How do we get together for that? So then we created some new channels specific to each feature. One thing that was really clear throughout was that even with all these communication channels, they all greatly increased the cognitive load on each attendee. And we saw, we were like, wow, there are so many channels, there are so many places for me to visit. I just it felt like overload for some people. So that was something that came out in our retrospective feedback that we have a few ideas on how to correct that for the next time. So maintaining engagement throughout the event. When you think about this, whether you're training a class or you're holding a, hosting a big event like this, without engagement, then you don't know if you really, people are seeing the full, the full picture. They're not seeing how they fit in and they're not really, how confident are you really in the confidence level that they have? So you wanna make sure that you have engagement, you're not losing them. Part of this is offering breaks for people, multiple breaks for people. 
the biggest part too we would have at lunch hours or even you know after the session at the end of the day we would have these little breakouts where people could go in and they could just hang out with with other people that had common interests so we had one channel with a uh with a zoom attached to it for meeting the kids so everybody that had kids around that you know they'd all come we all had the cameras on they all got to virtually meet each other which was really fun people who love pets we had one for that we had one where they were playing charades uh, i didn't did not join that one but i heard that was pretty fun um, we had open mic music we actually had to start our days as well and we had different quizzes on the different intents the different things that we were working on all of this is serving the intent. It goes beyond just maintaining engagement to really bringing that energy up and keeping the energy up throughout. There are so many studies that are going on now about these virtual sessions and how important it is to get people up, have different things going on versus spending time just sitting in one place for a long period of time. Um, we had a theme too. We had um, fun hats. So everybody even, some people multiple times during the day and definitely each day we had different you know hats that they would bring in so create a theme maybe create a space where people are actually having fun enjoying and enjoying being there so the next part is everyone together presentations so we uploaded the presentations that we had think of the business readouts the product management readouts the architecture readouts we had all of those uploaded ahead of time we recorded them separately. So if there were any issues day of, we had a backup plan. So as in all things related to this, you wanna have, make sure that you have a backup plan. You wanna thread communication, uh, any questions that people have in a communications channel that we said, and we used a timer so people actually knew, you know, this is my time box, this is how much time, uh, time I have left. And you also want to auto mute the participants as they're joining so you don't have all of these beeps going through. So then team planning and collaboration. When you think about just putting people into their breakout rooms and okay, ready, set, go, let's get started. We came up with something that we thought was really fun um, and very useful that we started each breakout with a team, huddle, a team huddle or a sync. This helped in this virtual event as we use these times to kind of plan, how are we gonna even plan our day versus, okay, great, we're in our breakout room. We know these are our features. We need to start you know, dividing and conquering. This was a just very informal part as we're just getting together in our breakout room with our teams to plan how we would use the breakout and specifically, hey, who are the people that we need to speak with from the other teams? If a number of us needed to speak to the same team, we consolidated the effort into an online meeting that several of us would attend. The Scrum Masters, of course, were extremely helpful here in organizing these time slots. And importantly, we agreed that as a team, we would resync many times throughout the breakout. So we weren't just, hey, we're all leaving our breakouts to go into other breakouts and having other conversations. We had agreed upon times when we would resync, all come back together to see if we needed maybe somebody else to join us, make sure we all kind of knew where we were driving moving forward. And if we needed access to key stakeholders that we knew everybody needed at some point, we simply just booked time in their calendars, making sure, of course, that these were open and visible ahead of the event. If we knew, hey, we are gonna need to talk to this person, putting something ahead of time was okay too. So continuous feedback and realignment. I mentioned that throughout the entire session, we asked for feedback. We did not wait till the very end. And this goes for face-to-face -to -face too. So when we get back to that face-to-face -face PI planning, which I am fully confident we will get there, we wanna make sure that during the event, you're getting feedback and you're doing something about it. It's great to have that retrospective at the very end of the event, find out how you can make things better for the next time but it's really important as well and it's crucial to get that continuous feedback throughout the session to make sure that if there's any changes that you could make you're able to do so rather than just looking at that after the fact when it's too late we would distribute surveys a lot of the online tools that we've seen have real life you know surveys that you can fill out 
you know, how are we doing? Do we feel like this is too long? How do we make need to make any pivot pivots? Do we need to add or adjust any of our working agreements? Um, creating an alignment across the facilitators at the start of every day was crucial. The facilitators is really what kept this going. It kept everybody, if they needed to have a conversation, they knew where to go, they had the support needed to do that. And that was really the most crucial role that we had here. And then of course we roamed the risks at the end of each day. We didn't wait till the end and our first PI planning was three days. So we made sure to do that at the end of every day to get ahead of them. Confidence voted plan rework. You know, the confidence vote is the most important part when you're leaving it, like how, how do people feel about this? Do we feel like we can execute on the plan that we have in place? There's a lot of different ways that you can do this. You can have an online retrospective tool, online poll, all kinds of different ways that you can get this. But you wanna make sure that you have time allocated to have these open conversations within your art for anyone who didn't have a high confidence vote. You don't wanna have it rushed like, hey, we have in this virtual setting, we have five or, or 10 minutes that we can go through this vote. If there's ones and twos, you wanna make sure, just as in when you're all physically together face-to-face, -face, that you're still allowing those same conversations, allowing people to express their opinions on this and to have conversations around it. And then if we need to plan any rework, great. But due to the time zones, it might need to be postponed to the following day. So even though we were, we thought we were very, very good at PI planning, we needed to create a new baseline for improvement for remote PI planning. And of course, every PI planning concludes with a retrospective on the event. When you think about this, we wanted to get feedback from the attendees on the distributed PI planning experience. And one of the biggest thing that I, that I teach facilitators is that when people go to breakouts, you want to make sure that even when we're apart, we're not all in the same room together, that they still feel like they are a part of something. So how do you do that as a facilitator? How do you make sure that people are saying, hey, you know, I kind of felt lost when I went to my rooms or I needed to have a conversation and typically I would just walk across the room. Now I have to find them. Now I have to go to a, a different room. I don't want to interrupt the conversation. There's lots of different things that are emerging throughout that event that you wanna socialize within your art. And you wanna have your group of facilitators saying, hey, is there a better way to do this? Because let's try to implement it now. Let's try to make some pivots and let's try to see what better outcomes we could get to here. We wanted to make sure that everyone added their location too. So we could identify appropriate improvement actions too. Maybe it was a specific area. Maybe it was due to bandwidth issues. Maybe it was due to timing issues. And then we also created a facilitators panel session where we were able to share knowledge with others about how to go through a fully remote event. We have lots of different resources and lots of different tools on the Scaled Agile community site for this fully remote, I call it the virtual PI planning session. But there's a couple, thing, a couple things that I'd like you to take away from here. Number one, you always want to assume positive intent. This is brand new for all of us, and we are all trying to work through this together, and we're all trying to learn together. It's really, really important to assume that positive intent. Also create the space. Make sure that people actually feel comfortable, that they feel like you have that psychological safety in place where they can raise issues. They can openly talk about risks. It's a little bit different in this environment. You wanna make sure that that's still there. And you wanna make sure that people still feel like they're in a community. When I think of a natural release train, it's a social network and we are social beings. We learn together, we're growing together. How do you make sure that you keep that sense of community within your art, even though we're all completely separated here? And those were three of the, at least my key takeaways that were really helpful as I'm teaching people how to facilitate these virtual events. Um, so I want to thank you for your time to get today. And if you have any questions, I have contact information on this here um, and we might have some time at the end. Wow, that was really informative, Audrey.
Thank you very much. And for those of you listening, we will summarize at the very end her logistical information that she just shared real quickly, as well as Raj's, so you don't have to furiously scribble it down. It'll be captured. And as a reminder, again, this is being recorded. So I don't know about you guys, but uh, I just learned a heck of a lot. So thank you very much for that, those perspectives, Audrey. We really appreciate it. Okay, we're going to turn this over to Raj Sankavaram, again, co-founder of Radis. And she's going to walk you through uh, some technology that actually cements and showcases how you know organizations are literally using technology to realize and accelerate their ability to collaborate and realize the benefits of the scaled agile framework in today's virtual environment. So again, this is a inform informational uh, session, and we hope that you see a few things that get you excited. So Raj, go ahead and take it away. Thank you, Bill. Hello, everyone. Good, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, all for all the folks from the various time zones. Um, I agree with Bill. I thoroughly enjoyed Audrey. Thank you so much, first of all, for taking time to join us for the webinar. And also, thank you for sharing with us how SAI prepared as well as conducted your first virtual <laughs> distributed PI planning session. That was very informative, Audrey. Thank you. Um, so everyone, you should probably be seeing my uh, this beautiful picture right here. Like Audrey said, right, this is a brand new, this is perhaps a new norm now, right? Um, this is our everybody, everybody's story now. As, as little as few months ago, all of us used to meet face to face and uh, do our in-person meetings, right? And now, thanks to our friends at Coronavirus Inc., right, all of us have been thrown into this virtual reality universe we no longer have that luxury of looking around our rooms and finding our, our wall, right? We, we cannot visualize our wall, move our stickies around. Yet, you and your teams want that feeling of traditional PI planning, right? You want to have that feeling of um, how can you get that feeling in this virtual environment, the feeling of actually moving the stickies around and visualizing your wall, right? Technology plays a very important role. Uh, especially now, right? Tools need need to be dependable and reliable. Right? We have to rely on this amazing technology and do the best we can. Metronome is a great example um, of this kind of amazing technology that is required for today's virtual reality. As a tool, it is a single source of truth because when you use it, you'll be able to access information. I'll show you and you'll see that in a short while. It becomes so much more easier and simpler for teams. We all know that uh, program execution is very important, right? That's one of the core values in SAFE. Um, our agile release trains can never stop and they have to be delivering value continuously. Now, what can um, our RTEs and product management do? Right, in order to ensure that the train continuously deliver value, right, they have to do a lot more uh, pre PI planning, right? They have to make sure that the teams have as much information as they can as they go into these PI planning events, right? Because obviously, you say uh, PI planning is one of the most critical ceremonies in SAFE. Um, so the teams need to have as much information going into this critical event so that no one is caught by surprise, right? Um, so our TEs, our product management, our scrum masters, they have to go in and set the tone of the PI with well-groomed and elaborated set of features and stories. Um, so now let's go in and see how metronome uh, can, using metronome, uh, metronome, how teams can do that, right? How they can go in and during pre-PI planning, uh, establish those um, well-defined features and stories, right? And then um, uh, we can, we'll go in and simulate a PI planning where you'll see how teams can go in and set their capacity, commit to stories, um, and also go in and define those uh, dependencies between stories and features, right? And finally, you'll, I'll, I'll show you very quickly how teams can do their program execution, how they can go in and track and visualize these uh, completion of stories and features. Um, so for today's demo, we are all going to be part of this SBA portfolio. 
right? Uh, we're all going to be boarding metronome train and will be part of this SBA portfolio, which has this DOD art. Um, and this DOD art has all these themes. And currently, this art is executing PI7. So let's go in and see how these teams, especially our RTs, our product managers, how they can come together and do some pre-PI planning. Right? The very first thing that they would do is right, go in and add features, right? get everything ready for our, our PI planning. So when they access this program Kanban in Metronome, right, they can click on add feature and here they can go in and provide all the attributes of the feature. They can go in and define what epic does this feature belong to, which releases this feature part of what's the solution intent, right, um, that this is uh, delivering to the customer. What's the t-shirt size of the feature, whether it's a business or an enabler feature. All that information can be entered in. Now, as they collect more and more uh, information about the feature, right, they can go in and hover on the feature card and they're provided with these two options, right, this enlarge and a quick edit and an enlarge option. So let's go in and click on that enlarge option. And here you can see there are a lot more attributes of the feature, right? They can go in and product management can go in and define what is the benefit that this feature is delivering, right, to the customer. They can actually go in and uh, provide more description for the feature. Let us say there is some functional specs or some other document that is sitting in your document repository, right? That might have a lot more information that's associated with this feature. So see how easily Metronome allows you to go in and embed that URL right here so that everything is in one central place, right? Um, teams can go in, product management can go in and define um, stories, right? Break this feature down to stories, assign it to a team's backlog, right? Um, define the story points. All that information can be entered in. They can actually go in and define the acceptance criteria for this feature. What's the minimum set of functionality this feature needs to meet in order to be acceptable, right? All that information has been entered. Now, let's say you go in, um, you take a look at this backlog. Your backlog has all these set of features that's well elaborated and sitting for you, waiting for you as a product management to go and make that decision, right? When am I going to implement it? How does the product management go in and make the decision that I, I want to implement this feature because it's delivering maximum business value, right? Um, Obviously, I clicked on the <laughs> wrong, uh, wrong, I uh, went back to the PowerPoint slide. Okay, so what I can do is I can click on this particular feature and it pulls up this, um, again, that um, edit feature option. Here, I can go in and enter scores for all of these uh, um, uh, WSJF values, right? Some of, the, some of us call it WSJF, <laughs> some of us call it weighted shortest job first method whatever it is, right? We are trying to use the WISCHIF as a uh, prioritization model here and we enter scores for each of the values. And when you click on submit, right? Um, metronome calculates the WISCHIF. And now product management can sort all the features um, in, this, in the backlog by WISGIF, right? And pull the feature. This is a feature that we were working on, right? As is a 2B business data model. So they can pull this feature into implementation for PI8. So this is how product management um, and product owners can use Metronome and get ready for um, uh, their PI planning. Now, what can um, our RTEs do, right? Our RTEs can go in and use the program calendar in Metronome and go in and define the strategic objectives. What are the objectives that will be part of this PI? They can go in and define uh, when is this going to PI going to be implemented, right? They can go in and say this is the uh, PI number, right? When they click on add PI, um, a metronome knows what was the last PI number and it automatically increments it, right? So they can go in and edit that. They can go in and define how many iterations are going to be part of this PI and also set the dates. So this is how all the critical information can be entered into metronome um, during pre-PI. So now that you saw, right, all this uh, information being entered prior to the PI planning, Right, so everything is ready for our PI kickoff. Now let's go in and see how uh, PI planning becomes so easy using metronome. 
so the very first thing our business owners do is right they go in and kick start the pi by reviewing what are some of the major events uh, that are going to come up in our planning horizon right um they're going to define these um dates they are going to go in and talk about this milestone date right um and how can the teams go in and prepare for it right what are the releases that are coming up um as far as uh, the current timeline is concerned right then uh, they're also going to go in and define what are the objectives that the team needs to focus on right then comes our architecture team so architecture senior architects will use the architecture runway and they're going to present the architecture vision right um so it's all about uh transparency and alignment right mm, uh, everybody all you want all your teams to be able to come together for the kickoff and be able to experience something like this large conference room feeling right the beauty here is um you know as all of these individuals whether it's your business owners your architecture team your product owners as they are reviewing all these things right uh, the teams will be able to visualize and follow along using metronome so it makes that uh, you know brings together that large conference room feeling so our product management next will go in and review the product vision right then they'll go in and access uh, the backlog and review all the features right we sat down and we elaborated we defined all the features during pre pi so all that information is right there so they can click on each of these features and review all the features in great detail um so now let's go in and have some fun right let's go in and um okay uh, let's go into uh, metronome so hopefully everyone should be seeing um metronome right now right this is the program board in metronome again we are going to now that the uh, kickoff is over right uh, so we saw how our business owners architecture team product management finished their kickoff now the teams want to go in and do some detailed planning right they are now ready to uh, go in and enter all that information right here in metronome what what will they do right they go in and access the program board and what they see here is a list of all the features right these are the features that we selected um, or the product management said that will be part of this particular pi right so what can the teams do uh, let's say there was an um, improvement feature that the teams decided that has to be implemented in this pi right uh, this came up during inspect and adapt ceremony obviously it was not thought, thought out through the pre pi right it came up during inspect and adapt what can the teams do look how easy it is i can go in and click on this add feature right here right and i can enter all that information right here um i don't have to navigate elsewhere so the teams stay focused and uh, they are they are all in that same space let's say i want to go in and add a new um story right i want to break this particular feature down to sto more stories i can do that i can click that um add story button and and add that feature right uh, sorry add that story right here i don't want, i don't have to navigate elsewhere so that it becomes so much more easier when everybody is focused on the same thing right so now let's go in and see how the teams can go in and plan independently right let's assume that they're all going into uh, their own team breakout sessions onto their own tables right so the teams will go in and filter this program board right i click on show all, uh, this drop down and i'm going to filter by web application team for today's demo let's all pretend to be part of this team right um so when i did that you see that um metronome filters to show you only a subset of those features those features and stories that this team is going to be implementing right um the next thing that the teams will do obviously is go in and enter the capacity right let's say they enter 45 50 right 45 50 so they go in and enter the capacity for each of the iteration and then they perhaps they're going to add more stories right maybe they have a lot more stories that they want to add right they might uh, go in and start uh, you know uh, moving all these stories they see all the their team backlog right um, during pre pi these were the stories that were already created by a product management product owner they can start going in and 
um, you know, pulling um, all these stories that they see from their team backlog onto iterations. Notice what happened, right? As I was uh, dragging and dropping these stories onto various iterations, right? Um, metronome calculates your load based on the number of stories that you committed to, right? Let me just show you, see what happened here. So as I commit to stories, uh, right, metronome calculates the load and shows you what's the amount of capacity that the team has. So this, th in this way, right, um, uh, the calculation, your capacity planning becomes so much more easier and everybody is able to visualize and follow along, right, everybody within your team. Now, the next thing that the teams will go in and do is they'll go, they're going to go in and track their dependencies. I'm going to click on this checkbox that you see. Notice what happens here, right? I can clearly go in and see, right, all these uh, dependencies. I've added all these depend dependencies ahead of our uh, <laughs> demo just so that you can visualize and follow along. How do we add these dependencies? I'll just show you one example. I just click on this add dependency here right let's go in and add a dependency between our team right our web application team right create user group that was one of the stories that we added create documentation and let us add that um, dependency with a marketing team okay so we will go in and uh, this is the feature for this marketing um, um, this let's do it for mobile application team and then let's say uh, this is the story that is dependent on right notice what happened right it's showing you this dependency that we just created between our team and this mobile team so um, teams will be able to go in and do that and visualize that um, as they go in and start marking their dependencies right um, next that I want to show you is and then the next thing that happens during PI planning is roaming of risk, right? Um, again, the teams don't have to navigate anywhere. They stay focused on this PI board right here. Um, everything that's related to this PI8 is right visible right here. They can click on risk right here. They can go in and add a risk. Um, and we also provide you with the ability to view these risks based on the likelihood and severity of occurrence. Um, finally, as we get closer um, towards finalizing our plans and, um, and uh, committing to our stories, the next thing teams want to go, uh, will do is um, the business owner will go around um, each of the teams and start assigning business values with the, uh, to, to those objectives. Now, how can you do that? Right, you click on this uh, pencil icon that you see here, right? Uh, teams can go in and assign business value along with the business owner, right? So everything is um, right here, visible right here, and teams can go in and um, edit and um, add values right here. And then, of course, uh, I, while I'm on the screen, I want to mention here that uh, teams can also go in and act, enter the actual business value, right? This happens towards the end of the PI during inspect and adapt, right? They'll be able to go in and capture the actual business value and uh, metronome um, calculates program predictability measure based on the planned and actual business value. So finally, um, you know, I wanted to show one of the things that um, uh, Audrey was mentioning which caught my attention was um, the team rooms, right? They were jumping between team rooms and um, there was that the scrum masters and the coordinators were making sure everybody was in sync and it keeps uh, everybody, kept a, the scrum masters kept a tab of where everybody was, right? Notice, um, our, although we were focused on just the web application team there, right? I want, what I wanted to show you here is how easily, right? Uh, teams will be able to, uh, to Cross pollinate and actually bounce back and forth between each team and go in and visualize their team boards, right? This is very important, especially in a distributed environment because you cannot go around the room and look at what's happening um, at the other table, right? You want to be able to see that there is, uh, you want to be able to build that right collaboration space so that you can go in and visualize what these teams are doing, right? So, Metronome provides this. Um, a view for the scrum masters, which is obviously very, very important, especially in a distributed world. 
Um, so, uh, so far, what you saw is how metronome simplifies PI planning, right? How metronome could be used during pre-PI planning. Now, let's quickly go in and see, right? Uh, uh, what, how can teams leverage the execution of the PI? So, PI planning is over. Teams are all busy, right? They are uh, they are focused on delivering value. Um, so technology and timing is not only important during planning, but it's more important during execution, especially since the entire art is remote, right? It's possible that, you know, since everyone is working remote, right, you might not even realize this and uh, your train might be slowing down and you might not even be aware of it. Now, how can at any point of time teams go in and visualize where exactly they are? Uh, what's the status of our uh, current PI, right? How can they go in and visualize? So I'm going to show you um, the landing page in Metronome, right? What you see here is again our SBF portfolio and uh, this portfolio has two trains. Let's go back to our train because we are only interested in our train for today's discussion, right? So like I mentioned before, DODR is executing PI7. Right, it, so you can clearly see with this view, right, that 81% of uh, PI7 has been completed. And what about the iteration? You can see three out of the four iterations have been completed, and the fourth iteration is in progress. So this is a very powerful view because it enables the entire network to come together and at any point of time clearly see where the train is, right? Are they uh, ahead or are they moving um, per schedule, right? All that information is clearly visible here. And while I'm on the screen, just quickly wanted to point out how big picture was our inspiration behind this view. And just like the big picture, everything that you see here is accessible with a single click, right? Whether it's your art level information, your PI level information, your backlogs, your iteration level information, everything is accessible with a single click. Um, I mentioned how uh, during execution you want to be able to track the status, you want to see where the teams are. There are several charts and graphs and dashboards at every level Metronome provides so that it's easy for teams to go in and visualize. Let me show you some of them, right? Um, let's say once a solution, um, you know, this, our art, DOD art is obviously delivering um, some solution to our customer. You, how is this solution intent being delivered, right? It's obviously delivered in the form of features. And where are these features? At any point of time, right, um, teams will be able to go in and visualize where is my feature, where is my solution? What are the features that are being uh, current? What are the features that are currently under implementation? Which feature is still in a backlog, right? Which feature has been completed? So it provides all these visual indicators, metronome, um, so that teams can clearly go in and see where exactly they are at any point of time. Um, let me go in and um, go, go to uh, some of the dashboards that are there for our train to go in and track the progress, right? You have this epic progress measure, right? Um, this is very useful chart. It tells us, uh, again, what are the epics that this particular art is being implement is currently implementing and what's the status, right? What's the progress that has been made thus far? Um, when I go in and uh, click on this feature delivery plan, right, uh, for this particular um, epic contractor portal, it clearly tells me how many features are there? Uh, there are five features that are going to be part of this release, release, um, release 6.0. Right? Let's say I go in and click on this um, epic, right, which is develop technology use maps. Notice what happens to uh, this release 6.0. There are two features that are part of this epic going, that are going to be part of this release. So all that information is readily available. I can go further down, I can click on that and see um, uh, the status of this feature. So everything that you see here has that hyperlink and lets you go in and jump in and drill down to that particular feature story or task and let teams um, go in and use them, especially in important ceremonies like Scrum of Scrum. Uh, I mentioned about program predictability measure, measure earlier. So this is one of the charts that you know Metronome provides and there are a lot of flow metrics 
um, that metronome provides. You have your flow distribution and um, just clearly tells you how many business stories, how many enablers, defects, and debts are part or have been completed at the end of each PI. You have your art velocity. Um, let me go in and show you how uh, a, a metronome could be used during scrum of scrum ceremony right um, now that is very important now this particular uh, pi7 we saw earlier right uh, this is being in, in uh, under execution so where where are all the features right uh, you can see um, they, this art is obviously slightly behind of schedule so what can we do in order to uh, get it on track right how about the stories Right, where are we as far as completing them? Right, all that information, cumulative flow diagram. Right, um, how many stories have been completed thus far? Right, what's the load of the story um, on each team? Right, how many stories uh, are they implementing? All that information is readily accessible. Finally, I'd like to show you one important thing, which is um, you just completed your PI planning, right? Uh, let's go back to our web application team, right? Now, this particular team has started iteration planning, right? Uh, now, what happens during iteration planning, they might decide that there are some stories that they want to uh, further elaborate. They might want to add more stories, right? All that becomes so much uh, easily. Uh, they can access and add and um, remove those stories, move around stories. All that becomes so much more easier, right? And during ceremonies like daily stand-up, teams will be able to go in and see, right? Uh, how many tasks are there yet to be completed? How many stories are to be completed? Are there any blockers right teams can go in and access the kanban board here and uh, go in and track these are all your tasks for the story right are they mm, completed are there any issues completing them right let's say as they are implementing this particular task right capture screenshot they come across a blocker right um how do they do that how do they especially in a distributed world right they can elevate this task to a blocker maybe management uh, did not make some decision on time right what happens then right as they go in and elevate this task to a blocker metronome asks them obviously this risk is something that um, uh, this uh, this task was came up as a blocker or an imp impediment during the execution of the iteration did that add a risk to that pi you might want to go in and add a risk right so that you can you can capture that risk for that particular pi now we're not going to do that let me show you what happens to the program board right uh, you see when i scroll down right you see this red mark on this particular story so when there is a blocker against the task right uh, the story uh, uh, that contains that task gets blocked. Notice what happens when I click on show dependencies, right? Um, notice what happens when I hover over this story. All those stories and features that are dependent on this particular story get also blocked, right? So now our RTEs, our product managers who are looking at the program board know that this uh, impediment has to be resolved quickly otherwise there is a serious risk on, to completing this particular PI so in this way you, not only does metronome help you during pre PI planning PI planning but very critical during um, the execution of the PI especially in this distributed setup so with that um, I'm going to come to an end um, to, our, to the demo of our um, uh, metronome, and now I'm going to hand it over to uh, Bill. Okay. Raj, that was um, really quite amazing. I mean, the what's so really exciting to me, and hopefully to some of the people listening here, is the fact that in 25 minutes or so, you went through a whole lot of functionality and business value, and yet you're really kind of just scratching the surface with this tool. I mean, it really is an extraordinary engineering feat here. So for the purposes of time, uh, I thought we'd go ahead and, and share with you all there uh, listening. Some of the questions we typically get from customers as well as partners, because we work a lot with partners as a mechanism to help them increase their business and their margins. So here's some of these, and I'll kind of go through these quickly. So first and foremost is what if we have JIRA? Does Metronome work with it or other safe tools 
And the answer is absolutely. It integrates with JIRA pretty much right out of the box. You know, Metronome can exchange data and work with pretty much any technology out there that uses a REST API to integrate data, pull it in, and also push it out. So your investments in other technologies aren't necessarily wasted if you already have them, and a lot of our customers really do, especially in the federal government, who um, has uh, invested a lot into JIRA. Second question, is it cloud-based or on-prem? Well, it's engineered as a cloud-based tool, but for some customers, like the US DOD, uh, and some customers want to have Metronome installed on-prem behind their firewall, we can do that, but it's natively built to support cloud environments. Um, does it scale? Um, well, the answer is absolutely. Uh, we, you know, we have thousands of potential users, so could Metronome potentially scale to a large organization? And the answer is definitely. We've uh, engineered this tool to accommodate literally thousands of users, and we haven't run into an organization yet that has too many users for us to be able to have Metronome impact its business. So then we get down to financials. You know, how is it priced? Well, we're uh, very excited to share that at a high level with you all. It's priced extremely assertively, as I would say, in terms of the price per value. There are so many other tools out there that don't do half of what Metronome does from an at scaled agile framework that are priced much more expensively. It's predominantly priced on a user volume base, a sliding scale. So the more users that use it, the less it is per month, per year. Um, we also have some services that come with the tool and we'll be happy to share that information with anybody that is interested in learning more. And what about services? What kind of services do Metronome come, does it come with? Well, that's another great question. Um, our help desk, our support for the software after it's installed and up and running is, there's no cost for that. Um, it is free with the licensing. Installation and integration, that all depends, uh, is extremely aggressively priced as well. It depends on what you have and how you've configured it would determine if there are prices involved or costs involved in that. Um, and we'd be happy to do discovery with you to determine that. So let's open it up while we still have a couple minutes. Um, I am looking at the question box here now. And if any of you all have any questions, let's go ahead and put them out there. So far, nobody's asking any. If they are, maybe I'm just not seeing them properly, but I don't see any questions coming out. If there are no further questions, Bill, we could probably end the webinar. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you, Bill. And thank you, everyone, for um, joining us on the call today. Um, um, I hope you enjoyed. And if you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to um, Bill or I. Yeah, this is being recorded, everyone. So there's our logistical info. Again, thanks for joining. We hope you got excited at what you learned today. And please don't feel shy about reaching out additional information. Thank you very much and hope you have a great rest of your week.